What is going on guys and in this video I'll be telling y'all one of the things that you should know before you buy any of a Nikon camera. And if you just stumble across this channel I should have told y'all a long long time ago. But let's get into it. So before you get into this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and let me know what you guys want to see me next or what you I want to help you help me. So the cold-hearted truth about getting a Nikon Z50 camera is we're gonna be talking about is autofocus. So when you pick it up, you kind of realize that there's two things going on here. Your Nikon Z50, is it have the capability of autofocus? as coming from its predecessors like the D5000 and you're looking at the DSLRs where the contrast detect phase autofocus and you're moving into phase contrast detection is that yes, the Nikon Z50 has improved a lot in its autofocus capabilities, but either other competitors like Sony has reached such great heights where you pick up a camera and you're like, wait a minute, Either this autofocus system is blowing all the other cameras out of the water and making everything look average, or you have companies like Nikon and other older companies that have gone extinct being like, our autofocus isn't as good and we're playing catch up. And as a video shooter, one of the things that I'm realizing after using Sony's, and I'm gonna show you a little comparison, the big test if you watch all the way to the end, is I will be actually talking about how you actually compare of what the capabilities of a Sony you're looking at a thousand dollar camera in comparison to a Nikon, it's equivalent. So right now what I'm gonna be doing is I'll be putting Nikon Z50 with autofocus on, autofocus with face detection turned on but with the ZV-1 over here what I'm going to do is I'll have it on defocus mode as you can see I'm going to put it as defocus as well as I'll be having the product showcase turn on and you will see the difference between the autofocus and how it will actually do so I'm going to have some couple tests to see what it can do. Like one thing I noticed about using the Nikon Z50 is that once I have my glasses on and the glare, it is very difficult for the Nikon sp specifically to track my eyes, especially if it's in a low light conditions. Whereas the Sony on the other hand, even though this is not their DSLR mirrorless lineup, this is just their pocket sized. There's an eye auto focus detection. That's something I wish the Z50 had, as well as the defocus mode on top of the product showcase. Whereas if I do this with the ZV50, even if I turn off uh, face detection, and for the last and final trick, is chances are, pen. as long as my face is not in it, I'm sure it can track it. I'm wondering if this can happen. But once my face gets in there, it gets confused. Whereas with the ZV-1, as long as you have it turned on, I have somewhat of a trust that it's catching focus. So when I initially bought the Nikon Z50, the biggest thing that I saw was its overall ability to actually have autofocus capabilities. I'm like, whoa, this is actually really great. I can do things like this. And know that I have somewhat accuracy of being like, hey, I am still in somewhat autofocus. There is a square over my face and I can have a dependability. But the minute that I turn off my lighting sources, it has quite a hard time in terms of detecting my face and whether or not it's gonna hunt, it's gonna pulse. And for a crop sensor APS-C, you would expect a little better. But the minute that I use the Sony, whether that's the ZV-1 or now that's gonna blow y'all out of the water is the ZV-E-10 with a headphone jack, is that 
Sony's defocus and focus button around the top, as well as product feature showcase, where let's say I can just pick something up, right? You hear me? Pick it up. That be in focus. But the minute I move my face, it needs to shift back. So yes, right now that little phase detection autofocus look fine. But the minute that you want to rely on it and let's say you want to be 20 feet away and you want to see that this Nikon camera is going to capture your face or whatever it is you're trying to shoot, chances are yes, but there is that 1% chance that you might not get the shot that you want to get. Whereas comparison to things like the ZV-1, knowing that it has eye detection, which is something that I wish this camera had, as well as having that product showcase mode, you want to figure out where exactly are your buckets laying. And if you want to worry about video, and primarily video, probably this guy is not for you. And you're much better off if you're staying off within this kind of budget range. Either go for the ZV-1, looking at the ZFC, or I think the, the newest, the biggest thing that you should be worried or kind of sway your opinion about is going to be the Sony ZV-E10, which is an APS-C crop with all the things that the ZV-1 has, but in a almost a 24 megapixel sensor with a headphone jack. And that is looking pretty tempting for me. And knowing where I've come from, I've never been camera biased. This channel was all about using what you have. And I kind of moved into Nikon Z50 because it made sense for me at the right time. But the more I'm using it, I'm like, this might be a decent B camera for me. This is not gonna be an A cam, let's say, if I were to film a feature project. But if I had to, yeah, of course, right? But I'm more looking into, let's say, the Nikon Z6 Mark II, or if I had to go pocket and travel, maybe the A7C, as well as, if you're talking about vlog competitor destroyers, that Sony ZV-E10, that is put in a lot of these other channels to just dust. But yeah, guys, that was the big test when it comes to whether or not you guys want to use exactly what camera you want to use. And I'm not bashing on Nikon except for the APS-C lineup is that yes, I really wish that they would update their lenses so you can actually have more affordability and budget as well as autofocus performance. Have they improved? Yeah, of course they actually have, have improved. But either, like I said when I started off this video, is that Sony is on such new heights that it's making everyone look like they're catching up or all these other companies like Nikon are actually falling behind when it comes to autofocus. But I do have a full live stream if you guys want to check this out, is that I have each camera is kind of known for what you get. For example, the Nikons, you're known for a good color science. Or Sony, autofocus, no one can even touch them. Check that live stream up. It is essentially a free training. Link is in the description below. Help me help you. And if you want to get serious about Nikon cameras and let me know what you guys think, check out my Nikon camera guide. Link is in the description below. And let me guys know what you think about whether or not do you agree with me, you disagree, you hate this video, thumbs up, thumbs down, let me know, and I'll see y'all in the next one. My name is Peter, and you're watching a Broke Virion Collective, where we all start with nothing, but you can always create something. Gang, gang.